Hello guys of United Rock Nations. Uh, we are here with Marco Mendoza of The Daisies. How are you? I'm really good. How are you, brother? Ashante. <laughs> nice meeting you all, too. Uh, so the tour with Kiss uh, is going now. It's eight shows that you, you have done. Yes. Uh, so you probably know better than I do. <laughs> so tell me uh, how it's going with this tour. I uh, couldn't be better, to be honest. I mean, we're really happy that uh, we had the opportunity to tour with KISS. Is, uh, we toured with them uh, last year in the US. KISS, Def Leppard, and we also did Bad Company, Linear Skinner, to, to name a few. Uh, but it's a great opportunity, if you can imagine, for a band like ours to get that kind of exposure uh, and to play in front of a KISS army audience, you know. They're, they know what they want and they know, they know what they like. And uh, so, big thanks to uh, to Gene and Paul and, and Eric and, and Tommy, you know, the boys and Doc, thank you so much, appreciate it. And is it difficult to play in front of the kids fans? Uh... Difficult? No. Challenging? In a way. But you know, music is like that. <clears throat> I remember getting out, coming off stage and I'm going, I was just mentioning it to Paul, I said, gosh, you know, they don't recognize the music, you know. I mean, you can see they're enjoying it, but... Uh, From the, from the point when we started, and the album just got released a few weeks ago, we've seen it progress. Uh, yesterday we were at Download, and within two weeks, the people were singing the lyrics. So, not all of them, I mean, let's be real, but, but you know, the front line, the first two, three, four rows is like, wow, awesome. So, uh, you know, a lot of credit to, to people like you. That's the bottom line, you know, and, our management team, marketing team, and social media team that are doing a brilliant job. <clears throat> But it takes people like you supporting us, you know, and, and taking the message out to the to the fans and the masses, the public at large. So it's been great. We're looking forward to doing more. We're, we're going to be going to Australia with KISS as well. And then we're doing the KISS cruise again this year. Uh, and then we come off of that, <clears throat> get on the White Snake tour here in Europe, which is going to be extra fun for me too. You will play on stage with <laughs> Everybody's asking, you know, <clears throat> I would love to. I don't want to infringe on anything, but I, I have a feeling maybe David will invite, you know, maybe. We don't know. You know, you can't plan these things, but it's always better when it's spontaneous. But uh, but I know the guys so well, you know, I know Tommy and I know Michael, Devin, Red Beach, and, uh, and now Joel or Hoekstra all amazing musicians so we're gonna have a we're gonna have a blast after that i'm told today we're gonna come and do a date here in paris yes. a headliner so when it's gonna be i knew you were gonna ask uh we haven't been confirmed the date and or the venue but it'll be here in paris towards the end of november and the news will come out here in the next week or so along with the documentary from Cuba, the trip that we did to Cuba, and, and a few other goodies that we're putting out there. So after that, we, yeah, it's good news. <clears throat> and then we go to the UK and do, do some gigs there, headlining, headliner, and then we go to Israel, just before Christmas, and then we get, I get to go home for Christmas. <laughs> How cool is that? So. Spend some time with my wife and my kids, which I adore and I miss terribly. I really do. Uh, so, uh, all the members of the Daisies are well known uh, for other bands. Uh -huh. um, do you consider that the Daisies is a main project or just a side band? <clears throat> well, to be honest, I think this, uh, the I think the members right now we're all committed to it. Uh, that you got to ask everybody individually, you know, but um, I had an I made an agreement uh, to be committed to this 100%. This is my priority. I like what's going on here. And I think Richard Fortas is as well committed and and Dissy Reed. Uh, of course, David Lowy, the founder, it's his project. And um, I just like what he's doing. I think he's it's a great vehicle for us to be creative in a fun way, without all the pressures of the business. 
And I couldn't be happier, to be honest, you know. And now we have John Karabi, yeah. who is in the same time frame, I mean, mind frame. He's He just fed in. He did a couple of shows in Cuba, and he just he's killing it. And we <laughs> love the guy, you know. He's a good guy to hang out with. Very talented. Vocally, he kicks butt. And uh, writing-wise, you know, he's a true artist. He's a true musician. He does it for all the right reasons. So uh, we're trying to make this, um, keep it stable and consistent. Uh, when I first got asked to participate and collaborate, I had prior commitments, so like all of us. When you get to this level, you get invited to do a few things. Uh, and so I'm working my schedule to make this a priority and work around it. So, and I think the rest goes for, the same goes for the rest of the guys. So this is a band, man, for all intended purposes. And, and we like what's going on. We love the music. And so we believe in it. So let's talk about the music. Yes. Days. Cool. Um, there are some 70s influences. Yes, for big example, time. For example, Evil, anti her for example. Who brings that 70s <coughs> spirit on the music of those days? I think we all do. I think we all grew up in that era, and, and we all celebrate that era. We're all big fans of, you know, the Beatles, you know, Grand Funk Railroad, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, Faces. Uh, free. I mean, yes. I could go on forever. Me, you know, Southern Rock, uh, uh, you know, Ted Nugent, the Almond Brothers Band, uh, Cactus, yes. Carmine, Vanilla Fudge, and all that, even though they were from the 60s. But there was a, that was a beautiful time in music, if, if, if you yes. can agree with me, in that... I'm 50 there, years old. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Um, Uh, it, I remember that period of time being very eclectic. You know, you had, uh, uh, you had, you had Hendrix, you had Janis Joplin, The Doors, The Beatles, I know, Ground Funk Railroad, Vanilla Fudge, you had uh, uh, King Crimson, and yeah. yes, the prog rock, Emerson, Lake, and Prob yeah. uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and it was just beautiful, man. There were a wide range of, of musical tastes, and Then we started calling it genre. We started, you know, Judas Priest, Judas Priest yes. Black Sabbath, Rush, and on and on and on, Deep Purple. And uh, so, um, unfortunately, I think what happened is the industry got involved with it and having to, wanting, wanting to put everything in a box. And so they, haven't, they started having, you know, to name it, you know, this and that and the other. And, you know... And I know it's only rock and roll, and I like it. That's it. That's it. Brilliant song, man. No matter how you cut it, right? But um, so we all lived there. When, when the time came for us to, to record and write, we all celebrated that. Our influences, our heroes, you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of John Paul Jones. I'm a big fan of Paul McCartney. Uh, you know, Tim Bogart, Jack Bruce, yes. and so on and so forth. And... On the bass, I remember going online and refreshing my memory of my heroes, you know. And we, you try to bring those influences, but owning it, putting your, you know, your version of the bass playing. So same thing with John, same thing with Richard and Dizzy, and on the drums. And David Lowy, he's a big fan of ACDC and all that. Uh, so uh, it was very cohesive. It was very easy, the melting of, of the, the, the styles exactly. and the, the favorite music that we all grew up in. We're all around the same you know, age period. We're all 49 and holding. And uh, uh, so we grew up listening to the same bands, different parts of the world, different journeys. But uh, so cohesively, it just melted into what it is. So the influences are there. The inspiration is there. And I think I'm, I'm very proud of the album. Absolutely. Very, very, very proud. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've done a few. Um, when you finished to record the album, uh, did you expect such a success like you have now? Uh, well, we're, we're happy. I'm really happy and proud of it. Um, I think <clears throat> when you're a true musician, a true artist, you do it for the love of it, for the passion of it. You're always trying to improve You're always trying to find the right song, the right chord progression, the right melody, the right rhythm, 
uh, I try to stay out of the results. You try to, me, and I think this goes for the, for the guys. Yes. You try to play from the heart, from the soul of it all, the spirit, and then you let it go. It's like if you have children, if you have kids, you prepare them with the best information. You send them to the best schools. You teach them the right things, and then you have to let them go and fly. That's what music is, songs are, you know? And if they're well-received, well, that's a plus. But uh, I can't say enough about management and marketing and the social media team, because they are the team behind the music, you know? Perfect. And they are very, especially now, and they're working 24-7, man. I'm talking to Maury in New York constantly, and I'm talking to everybody, you know, David Edwards, the manager who is out here, you know, watching every step and guiding every step. So it's a great team of people. Uh, so a lot of credit to them, absolutely. And uh, so to the moon, Alice. <laughs> um, so we have selected some songs yes. that we want to talk about. Beautiful. Um, get up, get ready. Yes. Uh, It's a funky song. It is. Uh, um, it reminds me um, sometimes the old Frank Marine and the Mahogany Rush. Very good. Uh, Mahogany Rush. Wow. <laughs> wow, you took me back. <laughs> Let me know uh, some, some things about that song. Um, that song came out, I, I remember talking about it. Uh, we were all involved in the process and the lyrics and all that. Of course, John Karabi took the bulk of it because that's his thing. Uh, but we all put our two cents in there and we try to, you know, help each other like that. Same thing with the bass lines. When I, I recorded, we all did the rhythm tracks and then it was time for me to readdress the bass and I wanted everybody's input, you know. I understand what music is, you know. It's not about me, 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 me. It's about us, 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 us. When a band, a real band. And so um, I remember talking about having a song that would be a great opener for a set, something that sets, you know, like Sgt. Pepper's, you know, roll up, roll up on a mastery tour, right? Yes. Uh, uh, for the lack of ever, uh, other songs is, welcome back my friends to the show that never ends, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. It's like a great opener anthem, you know, and kiss and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's where it came from. Get up and get ready. Here we are, we're gonna have a good time. Uh, it kind of leaned on the funky side. If I remember correctly, I was playing, I was recording Critical with a fretless. And uh, uh, I do other projects where I get to play a lot of 16th and 32nd notes. And Richard, who is, you know, we were there, Richard said, man, what do you think about playing a 16th, 32nd note pattern here and there? I said, really? Because I was trying to kind of like, be a bass player, which is great. And I'm a big fan of Jocko, Rocco Priscilla, et cetera, et cetera, with the fretless. And so we started approaching and it worked. Uh, so it was just a party song, get up and get ready, here we are, we're gonna have a good time, and then the rest of the album. In our minds, maybe we were thinking that would be a good opener. But, you know. Uh, that means that tomorrow you will begin. <laughs> no, no, uh, things changed. The opener is our single that we're supporting is Mexico. Okay. Because it goes with the theme and everybody's loving Mexico. Yes. So Get Up and Get Ready is a party song with a funky side of it. Just to give you an, uh, an idea of where we can go with music. There's so many directions we can go. So we touched on that a little bit, you know. So Mexico was the second song I want to talk about. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Why you had chose this song for a single? Uh, again, you know, out of our, it came out of our experience uh, to Cuba. It's all coming together. It's part of our journey as, as the Dead Daisies. We've touched on this Latin American culture thing for some reason. Our trip to Cuba, Viva la Revolución, <laughs> what we're all doing here. We're kind of going, to, we have a little bit of a revolution going on because we're going against the grain. Mexico was a song that we had already played in front of an audience, big audiences with kids in the U.S., and with Bat Company and Leonard Skinner, and people were digging it. And when you have people like Joe Elliott from Def Leppard and Paul Stanley and Gene going, that's a good song, What'd you put? what is it? It's a good sign. And you have people singing the, the hook, the chorus, because it's very, it's available, yes. you know. 
going down to Mexico, man. I'm going to have a good time, but you better watch it. You know, um, so reminiscent of songs like Panama and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, it's a great song, man. I, and I think uh, marketing team and the social media team, they know what they're doing and they suggested for this to be the first single. Uh, uh, it's very available. It's easy. It's a strong hook. And people remember it after exactly. they hear it. Exactly. So that's important, you know. So that's our first step forward. But we have a lot more. So go ahead. Go ahead, Marco. <laughs> so, I love your name, by the way. It's a great name. Marco, Marco. Marco. <laughs> uh, Midnight Moses. Midnight Moses. Uh, has a fantastic vocal line. Yes. Um, for me, it's a hit, for sure. Yes. Uh, tell me more about that song also. Uh, well, everybody's fan, fans of, of music, and to be honest, uh, uh, the Alex Harvey band, uh, I heard a little bit, and I spent a lot of time in England with you know the other bands, with Thin Lizzy and with White Snake, with Dolores, England and Ireland, and they definitely made a, a big mark. They they left a big you know uh, mark in rock and roll history and all that, and. Uh, so funny enough, we're having our first dinner, our first get together with John Karabi before we go to Cuba. And uh, we were talking about covers that we were doing on the set. And he said, have you guys, you know, the Alex Harvey band? And, and Richie said, yeah, yeah, and I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah. At dinner, he started playing the track. And the riff, the beginning riff, just It was like, bing, we all went like this. And he says, you know, I used to do this in my set years ago. I think this would be a good one. And we all agreed, and we did it. We played it in Cuba. And Cuba, uh, uh, to be honest, they haven't been exposed to a lot of stuff. So what a great way to test something. They've never heard it. Very few people did, if they did. And as soon as the riff comes in, they start bopping and... So that's a great sign. So we decided to keep it. Right away, we went into the studio, studio and we recorded. We started the, the album, Revolución. That's another reason why we decided to go with Re Revolución. The, the recording process started in Cuba. There's so many parallels. There's so many flags kind of guiding this project, you know. And uh, again, you know, the people outside and the parameters there, management and social media and marketing, we're doing the work. We're really involved, and they're outside going, let's go in this direction, and we go, you know. So a lot of trust is involved, and do we have reservations? Yeah, we all, we're all very opinionated people. We have our egos, we have our own, you know, uh, things that we want to do our way, but in the, in the bigger picture is more important than the individual ones, so we all understand that. And, uh, that's a great song, don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Even even when I heard it for the first time, I don't think I had ever heard it. I might have years ago, but within the first eight bars, it was like, wow. And it's got that odd meter, like uh, a little bit of an odd meter uh, prog thing going on, but it grooves like a dog, man. So, so it's great. We what's your favorite song? We, we have talked about Get Up and Ready, uh, Get Ready, Mexico, Midnight Moses. What's your favorite song of the new album? Uh, I have so many, you know. Uh, really, I really do. I, I, love, I love Mexico. Uh, um, I grew up in Mexico. I'm partial to the song and the process, the way it was written and where it came from, um, uh, obviously. And I think it's a great choice for a single. I love Critical. You know, I love Something I Said, Sleep, it's a very special song to me, Get Up and Get Ready, Let's all Go Have a Good Time, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Right now, I'm really digging You and I, and You and I, because the content, the lyrical content, talks about the state of the world right now, and, and the first place that we can start changing things, like Michael Jackson, I'm the man in the mirror, it starts with you and I, you know. So a little touch tone, if you will, of the state of things and how we can start helping the planet. And you can apply it to so many things, you know, ecological things, political things, humanity things that I won't get into. It's mind-blowing what's going on. So it starts with you and I.
What, do you, what can you do to make a difference? What can I do to make a difference? In our own little circles of life, what we do, you know? So you and I, it's got a, it's got a good one. We've been doing Find the One. And again, you know, people don't know it, but it grooves nice, you know. Uh, and uh, so there's, you know, uh, unfortunately, and I have to be honest, we did the album and we all moved on to other things. And when it ta the time came to do a set, it was hard because there's so many favorite songs from everywhere. <clears throat> but we decided to do a few covers on the set only to break the ice. Ultimately, as entertainers, as musicians, especially when you get in front of a KISS audience, right, who are the ultimate rock and roll show band and rock and roll band of all time, in my opinion, one of them, and we're there on their stage, we have to entertain, period. We have to give them a memorable show. So we had we decided to include a couple of covers, you know, uh, and it, and then it goes off really well. Deep Purple, Hush, oh, Made Night Moses, Evil, Cactus, yeah, or Howling Howling Wolf. Sorry. Me, I have a question for, yeah. for tomorrow because we have twenty five songs uh, on the two albums. Yeah, uh, so very good. How, how many new songs you will play uh, tomorrow? For <clears throat> I understand that you will play two covers. Yeah, we're doing two covers. We're Mexico, doing of we're doing Mexico. We are doing uh, find the one and you and I, and we do uh, one of my favorites from the first album is Lock and Load. Beautiful, talks about you know Lock and Load. Have you heard the lyrics? Yes, sir. Another thing that's going on in society today, and then we finish with Helter Skelter, which is so... Oh, I shouldn't even be saying this. We should wait for you to come. Is this going to go on the, on the air t today? Yes, uh, uh, yes. Okay, forget I even said anything. <laughs> We're going to play a few surprises. <laughs> But come, I promise you guys, it's, it's a great show. The musicianship level is, is over the top. Uh, you know, I could sit around and watch Richard play guitar all night long, and I do. I'm lucky that way. <laughs> Dizzy, Dizzy Reed, you know, what can I say? That cat also can, he sings like a bird. He writes beautiful stuff. The B3, the, the roles, the worldly stuff that he does, I could watch him play all night too. And then, then we're very lucky. David Lowy, killer, another, you know, songwriter, master, and uh, really, he, and riff, riff wise, great stuff. Uh, he's he's been playing some stuff backstage. It's pretty cool for the next album, and then John Karabi, man, who's a great frontman and singer and songwriter. And then we're lucky on this tour that we have Tommy Coferos on drums. Yes, uh, I have a question about that. Why yeah. Brian is not here? Uh, was, uh, Brian, you know, um, again, you know, the, this process, the process of getting the band together with some of the best cats around, is you're going to come across situations like that. I. I, there was an instance where I couldn't, I had to fulfill a prior commitment with uh, Black Star Writers. And uh, I couldn't do both. Even though the Dead Daisies were supporting Black Star Writers and, uh, in England, in the UK. Yes, exactly. So that was last year, year be two years But ago. You, you left. Yeah, but get this. I was so into the Dead Daisies that I tried to do both. I almost did it both, but whatever. So I fulfilled my commitment, so they had to call Daryl Jones. Great, from the Stones. He was a brilliant player, great guy too, love him. And um, so the same thing happened with Brian. Brian had made some plans for this year that he had to fulfill, and, uh, but he's coming back to us in Australia when we go out with Kiss. So he's part of the band. He is, um, uh, you know, we have to have that meeting and have him Uh, have him clear his calendar. It's up to him. It's a personal thing. All I know is that we want to make this a consistent lineup. It's very important for the fans, for us. We want to make this as powerful, as strong as, as possible. And so commitments from, from the lineup is kind of necessary. So we'll see what happens, you know. But I think he's uh, talking to management. I think it's... Uh, He's in for the next run, which is Australia with Kiss, right. the Kiss Cruise, White Snake. Okay. We're coming back to Paris to do one date at the end of November. We'll be there. Yes, sir. I hope so. And then we do the UK uh, headliner 
in December, first part, and then we go to Israel. Uh, I have a last question. Yes, sir. Tell me why the daisies are dead. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wow. Um, well, to be honest, you know, when, when I got approached, the name had been in place already. And I, told, I got told the story where it came from, and I dug it, you know. Being uh, an older person, I'm not a young guy. <laughs> I'm very young in spirit, in the mind. I have, you know. But um, the Dead Days, is, the name was there by the founders, which is David Lowy and John Stevens. And it came from uh, an incident that happened, a health It was a heart attack that a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend had. And the doctor said, you better watch your steps. Stop drinking, stop smoking, stop doing drugs. Yes. Or you're going to be pushing daisies, which is an American. Oh. Because when you get buried, you push daisies out. I kind of dig it, you know. <laughs> and the concept is that, uh, you know, flowers can come out of negative things. You know, you can make a, a, a negative into a positive. That's how I read it. That's what it means to me. It's art. It may, might have a different meaning to you. The impact that it's having is that people are curious. Yes. And it works that way, in that sense. Naming a band these days is really, if you think about it, to try to be different and to have a concept behind it, it's pretty hard, man, to just come up with something that hasn't been done or touched on, you know, so I embraced it. I embraced the name, I dug it. And, and, and then I saw the logo, I'm going, yes! The skull with the daisies growing out of it, I dig it. Thank so, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard before you were, you were playing guitar. Yeah. Can you play something? Yeah, absolutely, what am I going to play? Say what, what, what you want. Well, I'm a big fan of the Beatles, right? And, and John and I were doing this upstairs. Singing in the dead of night Take these fucking wings And learn to fly All your life You were only waiting For this moment to arrive You were only waiting For this moment to be free You were only waiting For this moment to be free Yeah, au revoir, <laughs> a viento. Thank you. Ciao, bye. Hey guys, this is Marco Mendoza with the Dead Daisies, and you are watching United Rock Nations. You better stay tuned, because there's a lot of great stuff coming your way. We'll see you soon at deaddaisies.com. Au revoir, a viento. Don't you go nowhere. You listen, you hear me? You know what I'm talking about? Some great stuff coming your way. Yeah!